Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Emacs Nanohawk X. Yeah, they're coming out with their own 1S 3 inch quad. And you might remember the Nanohawk, the original. And uh, whether you're into uh, either one of these, or maybe if you're a builder, I think something that's fairly important, or something I'm coming to the conclusion of, is this is probably the most hardy 1S board, 5 amp ESC all in one, that we have on the market today. I have done things to both of these quads that I shouldn't have done. Like one of the things, if you're familiar with the channel here is I don't advocate the use turtle mode really at all, unless you're inside with something like this. But I turtle moded this a number of times outside. I was on the concrete, but I did it probably eight, 10 times. Normally that would have, you know, caught a prop on a, crack in the cement or something and killed the ESC. Maybe I got lucky. For those of you out there that have been using this board, let me know what you think of this board. But right now, I think this board to check out uh, for your build purposes at the very least. And also, this is a new prop from Emacs. Let me check my sheet here. They call this the Avia Nano. And uh, builders also, if you're using three inch bi-blades, you may want to also check this out. We'll have more on this prop later. This is Emacs own design. And if you're familiar with Emacs props, they are generally very well balanced. And this prop is lighter than the other props on the market. We'll cover that after the flights and stuff. Empowering those props is the TH1202.5 11,000 kV Emacs motors, secured by four screws in your typical mounting pattern for nine by nine. The FPV camera is the Runcam Nano 3 with the version three lens. We do have a power switchable VTX that is uh, pin soldered on there and that goes from 25 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts, but you do have to unlock it to get all the frequencies and channels and power levels. It comes with an XT30 connector and a capacitor connected to that connector. We have a whip or linear dipole antenna for a VTX and a little piece of wire for our control link receiver. It weighs 43 and a half grams. It does come with one 450 milliamp 1S battery. And with that battery, it weighs 56 and a half grams. Bottom plate looks to be two millimeters thick and motor post to motor post, I'm getting 120 millimeters. Frame isn't super stiff, but I have certainly felt more flimsy carbon. That's for certain. It comes with a USB charger with six ports on it. They're PH20 ports. So it comes with two adapters that gets us PH2 to XT30. It also comes with another adapter so you can fly PH20 batteries on it. Little baggie of screws, nuts, various hardware accessories. It comes with six props, but I lost one because I tried it out without using prop screws. We have a support and social media card and stickers, four of them. So I did find a flight that didn't have excessive cicada noise or mowing noise, you know, typical neighborhood noise. So we're gonna run with it. This flight is gonna run four minutes and 24 seconds on a 450 milliamp battery. Uh, at this point, my props are a little bit beat up, but not in terrible shape. Uh, I flew it actually just today and I got stuck in a tree right above the pergola and I had to throw a football at it to get it out. I'll show you that little clip at the very end. I've got some other like picture in picture clips I'm gonna uh, show you as well, just some additional flight footage. Uh, but as we get on with the kind of the details, uh, one of the things about Emacs quads that I think most people would agree is that they do come well pre-tuned. Uh, they're, they're generally, they go through their rounds with their Emacs pilots and, and those that work for Emacs and they do a nice job on the pit tune. I haven't had really any complaints, uh, but for those of you that have been flying Emacs products, uh, chime in there on your thoughts on their pit tunes, because I think it's been several years that Emacs has been providing tunes. I think I was actually just having a discussion the other day about you know how four years ago we had to make all sorts of corrections in our micros and we had to pit tune everything that came for review, or at least it was rare that they came with a pit tune, but Emacs is, uh, in my opinion, again, has always done a nice job. And they uh, they went back and they took their time and they redesigned, kind of making things their own and, and coming up with their new props. When I first looked at these props at a glance, I, I thought they were, you know, current market props. It turns out, no, nope, Emacs has designed their own three inch bi blade, which is a good thing because, you know, more props, more options. Uh, this one I think is especially quiet, but again, you should be able to hear it relatively well. We have a very calm day and not a lot of neighborhood noise. 
so you should get a good feel for the noise it emits. Things like this make it easier to fly. You know, if you if you got a park that's maybe in a residential area and you don't want to bother anyone, um, or you've got a big park where maybe there's a section of it that's good for flying and a section of it that's good for people, and you just don't want to bother those people. You know, anytime you want to be uh, respectful of other people's time outside or discreet, um, or maybe you have situations where you just want to be discreet because you don't want anybody to bother you or to notice you. Uh, I can get with any of those reasons really so this is going to be pretty dang quiet uh, you know on 1s we have cheap batteries for the most part although those batteries don't tend to last as long as their multi cell counterparts uh, I've said this many times on the channel I do charge my single cell batteries to high volt but I do not high volt charge my multi cell batteries uh, you can choose to do it the other way around or however you want but I like to offer that advice because oftentimes I think people get the wrong impression because it has a sticker on it that says high volt thinking that you have to charge to high volt you don't have to charge to high volt I, I did use the charger it's a pretty basic charger that we've seen it's got lights on it that I believe this one flashes and flickers when it's not charging it's solid when it's charging and when it's done the lights go out I think that's how it operates something very very similar to that it should be pretty apparent of course it's going to charge a little bit better if you plug it into like a cell phone uh, brick or if you have you know, a, a different sort of device that can give the uh, charger more power. If you plug it into a computer, uh, charging time is going to take a little bit of uh, time because you're only getting, what is it, 5 volts out of USB. So especially if you're charging multiple batteries. And uh, you can definitely fly this on bigger batteries. I experimented with 520s. Uh, I always like to go light. As long as I can get a couple of minutes of flight, I just prefer the agility of my quads in all arenas to be a little bit lighter. Uh, I don't necessarily need a lot of carry, um, so I don't need that extra battery weight, but I did fly the 520, and I got about 20 to, to 40 seconds of additional flight time. There's a huge variable in there. You know, when you're flying, whether you're flying, you know, fast or slow, or if you're doing a lot of flippy floppies or you're doing a lot of punch outs, those are all huge variables to your flight time, you know, using the uh, working energy out of that battery by having fun. So uh, even though I might quote you a flight time on other batteries, yours might be more and it might be less. Kind of depends on how you fly. I also flew uh, 650 milliamp 1S batteries and I did on a cruising flight get almost, I think it was six minutes and 40 some seconds on one of those 650 milliamp 1S batteries. Here we've coming into the end of the flight. I uh, touched low on the battery here. We got four minutes and 24 seconds as I started at the beginning of the video. And our battery cell voltage on disarm comes up to 3.46, uh, 47, 48. So we're real close to where we want to be. Uh, I might have been two or three seconds too long in the flight in order to hit right at that sweet spot of 3.5 volts. So up in this corner, I want to show you a little footage. I have been asked repeatedly by one or more of you to uh, power loop the uh, pergola, which I did. Uh, I actually spent a couple of flights just kind of doing that, not the whole time, just flying around and try to work that it one in that in once. I had one particular power loop of the pergola where I came down between the slats, and I was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool," and I tried to actually hit that. I'm going to have to get a lot more proficient in my power looping of the pergola in order to be able to get that right uh, feathery touch to the amount of throttle I need to give to not clear it, but get to, I, you know, I want to get to those last two boards in the pergola and be able to come down with it. Now, don't expect me to do this in every flight. I think that's most appropriate when I'm dealing with a super light micro. If I have something, a traditional three inch that's coming in over 100 grams, I think I need to avoid that because I am sitting so darn close uh, to that area. I touched on it a bit about the flexibility of the frame, and I will have a crash reel that I'll play up there as well. And so you can follow along, hopefully, in the, the talking points as well as the uh, flight footage. I found this to be very hardy. You could probably tell from my props that they are pretty scuffed up. Uh, again, I did, power, or, uh, I did turtle mode this a number of times on the cement. Uh, in that area where I kind of was, you know, if I, I hit a tree and landed on the cement area, I would uh, turtle mode. Or if I was in an area of the lawn where it was basically not lawn, where it was just dirt, then I would turtle mode there as well, which is something that I don't recommend. I do it on the channel and I show it to you t only to kind of show some robustness of the all-in-one board and the motor combination. Because oftentimes when you turtle mode, 
if you turtle mode and you have an obstructed prop or you have too much resistance, uh, that can cause damage to either the motor or the ESC. So warning, but also I want to show you that I did do it in order to be able to test it. I do appreciate the fact that they had the foresight and to include a couple adapters, especially because they did go with an XT30 on here. So not everybody is going to have their own adapters or even want to make their own adapters. And you will need that if you use a PH20 charger, whether it be this one or some other that you have. Uh, many uh, traditional chargers can do just uh, not a balanced charge, but a regular charge cycle. And you can plug these in and you can charge them on your typical uh, LiPo battery charger. But I think this was a good point to uh, bring these in. Notice that they are black. Uh, they even thought about the motif. You know, oftentimes with some companies, uh, we wouldn't be surprised to find these in the traditional yellow. But they went ahead and they matched the XT30 to their, their motif, as well as their included battery also came with a black. XT30. So Emacs is obviously taking their time to think through these things. Uh, I want to get this prop out and I want to weigh it and I want to show you these other two props. So the Emacs Avia prop comes in at 0.78, almost looks like 0.79 grams. This is the gem fan. So it's not too much heavier, but it's a little bit heavier. That can matter. And then we have the HQ which the HQ is the heaviest. Now there is, it's not all just about weight, of course. We all have a preference for props, uh, a certain sort of flight feel that we might want to achieve and the prop, one particular prop may uh, provide that for us. Uh, this prop, I did notice, it tends to get more bent and get those creases in it. Matter of fact, in my props, let's see, where can we see some of those creases? I know I had some in this, but I've straightened them all out, or at least I try my best to. This prop is really, rough i think there's a crease right here at the end right about here there's a little bit of a crease in that prop again i tend to try to straighten these out and if you're wondering you know i don't have any special technique for doing that but basically i just try to grab the prop and i try to get my fingernails in the uh area of the crease and then i just squeeze the prop and i slide my fingers out on it Sometimes that works real effectively, other times not. Sometimes you just have to kind of grab it and then bend it the opposite way that it got bent in order to take that out. But again, if you have jello in your video, which you may have seen a little bit of mine, that tends to come from props. The, the Runcam Nano 3 is very sensitive uh, to vibrations. It shows those in the camera image quite a little bit. Uh, they do have a piece of foam right down in here, and uh, that helps to secure the camera a little bit. I think this tab and this mount around the camera is primarily for their purposes of assembly because in the NanoHawk, Nano uh, the original one I, that I had out earlier, oh, here it is, I fussed with that a little bit thinking that I might be able to use that to change my camera angle and then, you know, I got all sorts of problems uh, with Jello in my camera so you can see I've had to glue that back down. Uh, so I think this is just for their assembly processes in order to make that work a little bit better for them. Uh, again, I crashed a number of times on the cement and the canopy has held up very, very well. As far as range on these things, you know, I fly close in. Uh, every once in a great while, I might, like when I go around to the chimney side and I pass around the backside of that bush, I would get a low telemetry warning. That's relatively close, but we get that house kind of in our way and so we get that intermittent telemetry warning that doesn't mean we would need to turn back necessarily it's just a, a warning uh, so as far as range i would expect in most fields that don't have large obstructions like uh, a building or structure that you should be able to get you know 100 yards or 80 meters something in that range uh, it is stated that it is d16 as well as d8 compatible i fly all these things in d8 mode uh, Emacs, if you're out there and you're listening, please make one of these boards with ELRS or Express LRS. That would be top notch. Uh, also, work on a 2S version because I have a favorite quad of mine that could sure use a robust 2S version. Um, and if you could integrate the VTX and maybe leave off the receiver, we have receiver options that we can now use that are less than a gram, half a gram weight. Some of us would go for that as well. But uh, I'm always looking for more people to get in the, the all-in-one game. Uh, while I do appreciate the robustness that I've experienced on this 
this board two times, uh, I am looking to push Emacs in the direction of making additional boards to compete in other markets as well in micros. Uh, Emacs, uh, I oftentimes refer to it as Emacs tape because they were one of the first companies that I noticed that was using this little tape to hold motor wires down, and I think that tape works real well. Uh, some refer to it as gaffer tape. Uh, the only thing that I would draw to your attention is noting that it's not fuzzy or anything. I have gotten some tape that's very similar to this. It's fuzzy. It tends to pick up a whole lot of debris, and uh, I don't care for that. One improvement I think they should have made is to give us some sort of rubberized mat here because while the batteries do hold in most crashes your battery only gets part of the way out it's really rare that i actually had the battery come all the way out i think if we had a little bit of a battery pad in there it would tend to hold it a little bit more still and when you have things moving around your quad that can cause flight issues i didn't experience those things but, you know, I'm one guy. When you get these into a lot more hands, then you might find that, you know, somebody notices that. So I think a little battery pad, even uh, a, a square that is cut, you know, we can do this ourselves. But, you know, we're always looking at improvements. We're always looking at critiques. Um, just something to stick in this area, I think, would help with the, the battery maintaining its position. Now, I only got one rubber band with mine. So I don't know if, you know, check the packing contents. We'll have to see when these start coming out in the wild uh, to see if uh, maybe get more of these rubber bands. Because I do think, you know, long-term rubber bands work for a period of time. And then long-term, they're going to dry out and they're going to crack and break. So that's something else to be aware of. Um, down here, if we take this off so we can get a little better view, we do have a plastic sheet. It's It's... I don't know what its purpose is because it doesn't really cover the whole board. So if you were to come down in wet, dewy grass, there's still a lot of potential to get that wet, dewy grass down there. And as you can see, now that we have it exposed, we also have an arrow that points to the front. And then we have these other two notches. We could use a smaller rubber band inside those notches if we chose to. Um, I wouldn't because it seems like a big hassle to get the rubber band down in there. But maybe if you break your rubber band and you have to make an adjustment, you've got uh, two different positions or two different sizes of rubber bands that should work effectively in order to hold your battery in there. I would also prefer hex headed screws um, on holding everything in place. You know, I didn't have any problems, but you just me being picky, fewer tools needed when you go to the field. Uh, it'd be nice not to have to have a uh, Phillips, and I'm sure we get extras in the bag. Now, I did talk about losing one of the props. These definitely fly these with screws. Uh, my very first flight, I went out without screws. I thought, oh, press on props, just like, you know, we've experienced in the past in other models or models that we've made. But it did not make it more than one or two laps around the yard before I lost a prop. And, of course, that prop flew off. Who knows where it went? I looked for a little while, but I didn't find it. So I just have the one extra prop. And, and hence the reason why I didn't change props in order to try to reduce jello out of my video. I just kept flying the same props. And, and speaking of keep flying, I, I really appreciate how Emacs does their... Uh, product launches when it comes to reviews they always give us plenty of time to fly these things a whole bunch i must have 60 plus flights on this while i was flying other things as well and it was here when i got back from vacation so you know as reviewers go we have all sorts of time that we can fly and experience these things make mistakes crash them ensure that they're uh, going to be relatively hardy for everyone when they get out there and that's that's something that I, you know, I talk about it a lot. Uh, I don't tend to, I don't beat you over the head with it, but I, for me and my comfort in doing this sort of thing, it's important for me to fly them so much that I have crashes so that I get a feel for a product's durability because we crash quads. The best pilots in the world crash quads. So those of us regular humans, mortals, we're going to crash them a lot. And we certainly don't want a product that can't handle at least some form of crashing. I did crash it, as I said, on the cement a number of times. Probably 15 plus crashes on the cement. Uh, probably another 15 or 20 out in the yard in the grass. But I will say that our grass is in good enough shape that most micros in this weight probably don't really feel the impact of crashing in the grass. They just kind of 
sit nicely down onto the cushion of the grass. Uh, unlocking the VTX is just like it is with the Nanohawk X. I believe you uh, hold down the button, which is kind of covered by my foam piece down here. So you hold down the button, you apply power, uh, keep the button held down for a small amount of time, and then you can release the button You know, after it's fully powered. Unplug, replug back in, uh, change your bands, change your channel, make sure you've got all the channels, and then you should be good to go. Also notice back here in the canopy, you may be able to see it, the little uh, kind of taupe or white colored connectors. Uh, they did not solder the wires, at least on this version. We have seen on other versions of Emacs micro products that maybe they launched originally with uh, wires that were soldered and later iterations came with connectors. At this point, I can only show you that this does come with connectors. Uh, maybe you would prefer soldered. That's, of course, something that you can do on your own as well. I don't know what the price is of this product, so I will have a link to the Emacs website as well as any other website that is carrying the Emacs Nanohawk X. And uh, I suspect, let's see, let's uh, let's do a little wager here, see if I have any, have my finger on the pulse of the, the pricing in the market. I, I suspect this is going to be... 119 that's that's my wager in this moment without knowing i i think it's going to be about 119 dollars so who's with me on that don't click the link just tell me do you think 119 <laughs> um but we should see a whole bunch of shops pyro drone should be selling these uh get fpv should should be selling them race day quads uh, we'll probably see them from rotor geeks uh, up in canada uh, sn hobbies rotor village um, you know, and then we have a whole bunch of uh, multi rotor UK. I think is also a shop that should be carrying these. We we should see this launch uh, at this time uh, at a bunch of different shops. So I'll list as many as I can find. I do have to. I will be at my desk working when this gets launched. So I, I might be a little bit tardy. So if you don't see any links down there, give me a few moments. I'm working on it when I can. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.